So now let's take a look at our application and see how it's going. We can create a tweet. We will schedule it for our test account and we'll say hello world two. And we can go to the current day and we'll go 31st and we'll go um, say five minutes from now. So 36. So if we create this, we should see that this tweet is scheduled. We should be able to look in our Rails logs and see that a job was queued. And you can find that in the logs as active job. It'll be square brackets at the beginning and then queued a tweet job for our tweet. So that's good. So if we edit our tweet, we should see that if we make a change to this and say, hello world 34, that our time can be a different time like 40. When we submit this, it should enqueue another job for it. But I, as I was recording this, I discovered we're using a button too, which generates a form around a button. And we've already got that inside of a form. So our browser actually gets rid of the nested form. There's only, uh, you can't put forms within forms, which makes sense. And so our browser is like, well, what are you doing? We need to fix that. And so let's go into our tweet form.html.erb. And let's change this to a link to, and we'll use the JavaScript that comes with Rails to actually submit this as a link instead, as a delete request instead. That will fix our issue there, and we'll be able to still change this to run at, say, 36. So we'll schedule that, and we will see a new job is added to the queue. So jobs are um, also able to be run immediately, and Rails actually out of the box comes with an async adapter, which means that it will keep track of them as long as your Rails server is running. And if you ever shut it down, all of the jobs are gone. And it's not the best solution for this. So we have to use a different tool to actually run our background jobs in production. And that's what we're going to add in the next video. It's a tool called Sidekick.